Hey, it's Lon. In this video case installment, I'll be digging for some more gold from the old Affiliate.com video launch series. I've covered some major work and delivered a few goodies of some of the groundwork that's consistent throughout these launch videos. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. And here's another tip that first pops up in video number two of the five video series at the 30 second mark and is again used with some frequency throughout the series, so let's take a look. In this technique, Andy introduces a nifty graphic element, which is a computer monitor that seems to be displaying a web page. And whatever page that is also happens to be related to what the narration is talking about, of course. And just so you know, in case you didn't, yeah, that's not like a camera photo of a real monitor displaying an actual web page. It's artificially created in a graphics program like Photoshop from Adobe. I really like this graphical representation. It's a strong visual. It works great to illustrate the narration message and gives a nice polished look that comes across as very professional because somebody obviously took the time or went to the expense to have it created. It's clearly not just a stock image or piece of clip art kind of thing. In fact, I've liked this concept well before the Affiliate.com launch, and in July, I went searching for a solution, and I found one. In the last video, I talked about one of my favorite resources, GraphicRiver.net. I did a search for Computer Monitor. There are a bunch of interesting images, including this one that looks a lot like the one Andy uses, maybe. The prices here are tough to beat. And I chose this one. This is a Photoshop template. And what it does is let me take an image, like a screenshot for a web page, for example, and it includes a little script called Action Script that I can run to pop it into the monitor. Now, this of course could all be done manually if you know how to set up layers, and create masks, skew the screenshot to fit. Ugh. I'm not a Photoshop expert, and things like mask layers and whatnot, they confuse the hell out of me. But with this particular file and the action script, I don't have to worry about any of that. Let me show you a quick demo here. Here I'm on the blog, and seriously guys, thanks for all the great comments. My good friend Mike Petzold, Sally weighs in, Howard the Outsourcer of Tiano, rock on buddy, Joe, Tanya, Walt thinks I must be, and I quote, a freaking mind reader. Walt, that might be because I'm actually a freaking Jedi Knight, known to have some mind trick capabilities. So I got that going for me. And perhaps my personal favorite so far from Chris Endress. Lon, you are so cool, I want to hire some woman to have your babies. <laughs> Aww. Thanks, Chris. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to go to the trouble... As opposed to some woman, if I may, perhaps something in a leggy blonde, if you could. Anyway, when you leave a comment on the blog, you have the opportunity to add a web address in addition to your name and email. You should pretty much always do this, by the way. It's good SEO juice. And right up here, that's what Walt did. And, of course, it's clickable. So, let's use Walt's page here for the demo. Good looking site, Walt. I'll just grab it with my screen capture tool, snag it. Gonna save it. And then open up Photoshop. And the monitor file that I got from Graphics River. I'm just gonna drop Walt's screenshot into Photoshop. And now the really cool part. I'll just select and run the action script that came with the Photoshop file. Hit enter to select the content and boom! Done! Save it for the web as a PNG file so I keep the transparency. And now let's use this thing. Here I have my handy dandy wannabe Andy template deck open. I want to add this new content, so I'll right click 
and insert a new slide. I have this sweet new custom image. I can just insert picture from file into my new slide. It's a transparent image, remember, so it blends in beautifully no matter what the background is. And let's see here. Andy's image is a bunch bigger. Um, PowerPoint tip here. You don't have to color inside the lines of the slide here. You can have stuff hanging out, so to speak. This can actually be a great visual effect to play around with. Anything outside the boundaries won't be seen in slideshow mode but it adds a nice dramatic effect. You can move it, of course mess around. You can go to format and actually play with this in a bunch of ways. I'm not going to do that for now. I like that. Now I want to point out that all the cool stuff and effects I did for you in this template are reusable in a couple of ways that I didn't really go over last time. For example, if you like this text box sample, I can just copy and paste it into the new content slide. Change the text, reformat, resize, whatever you want to do really. And another thing I didn't explain before is this. If you want to duplicate any effect in any of the slides of this deck, all you have to do is use the Animation Painter. Move to any slide that has an effect that you want to copy. Click the Animation Painter and click on that object. Then go back to, again, any slide that you want. Here's the one we're working on and apply that effect just by clicking on the object that you want to have those effects. And this works for text too. Move the entrance up like I showed you before so that it all kind of happens with proper timing. And there you go. Computer monitor a la Andy. Nice, eh? Well, it's nice for me because I own the expensive Adobe Photoshop program. If you don't, well, this little trick would be a little tougher. So I'll tell you what. If you leave a comment in this blog post, I'll make one for you too, like I just did for Walt. Check the text in this post for more detailed instructions, but it's super easy and my way of saying thanks for participating. Oh, and one more thing. Since this nifty new graphic is a PNG image with transparency, you can also drop it right into the callout track in the Camtasia 7 timeline for a little extra fun and even add it to your library so it's always available as a custom callout to play with. Well, that's it for now. I do have a couple more tricks up my sleeve for this series, so stay tuned. Please leave a comment and tweet or share this post and I'll whip up a tasty custom graphic for you too. Alright, now get to work everybody. See you next time.